before we go into fusion um, for compositing, I just thought I cover something um, that uh, I, I didn't talk about, which is how I set up my rendering. Uh, this is the master layer, so but that's where you see everything, um, all the objects and, and the camera itself, you know, the one that we are using to render. Uh, then I have set up all the layers that I needed. Uh, the first layer, it's only blue. So when you render uh, blue, so when you render him uh, by himself, you know, this is what that layer would look like. And, and I can take this layer inside of uh, Fusion by itself and apply the correct color correction, anything that I wanted to do without impacting other things. This is the world position pass layer, right? And uh, this is giving me the RGB value of X, Y, and Z uh, point in the space here. Uh, you will see this back in uh, Fusion when we go there. This one here is the shadow pass or shadow layer. Uh, and if you look at the passes here, um, I haven't really associated any pass because I just wanted the beauty of shadow that is here. Uh, and when you render this, and, and the way I have set this up, you will see as soon as I show you my uh, my rendering is that blue himself is not visible in that layer right he is completely gone and therefore you don't see anything here in the uh, in the beauty or the rgb pass but as soon as you go into alpha you see that there is shadow there right and i just wanted the shadow so i have removed visibility of uh, the character same thing i did here with uh, reflection that uh, you don't see blue himself but you see his reflection only. Um, and again, in, in alpha, you will see reflection here in the floor and reflection here inside of the uh, of the glass. And you see here in RGB, you know, there is a reflection here and reflection here. So all these layers, then I uh, rendered separately, and for each layer, I have uh, some of the passes that I needed. This one here is the world position. That's what I care about the most. And all of these are rendered as open EXR file, 32-bit, um, which has the render layer as the name. And 32-bit gives me that full float where I can have all other information inside the same file, uh, shadow, reflection, all the passes that I showed you uh, earlier. Okay, so here we are in Fusion, um, and so the very first is obviously the backplate, and uh, this is the the undistorted backplate. Uh, you can see here this is what uh, I had created inside of Synthize and uh, rendered out of Synthize as undistorted image sequence. But there is also another way that I wanted to highlight that this is the distorted file, the original file that came from the camera. Now. Fusion has lens distortion correction node. Uh, let me just uh, reset this. You can still s see the, uh, the distortion. We haven't really changed anything here. If you remember back in Synthize, I had copied a uh, value here in the notepad. And this is the distortion as calculated by Synthize. So I'll just uh, copy it again. Now, lens distortion has a script for Synthize, right? So as soon as you select that, it will tell you uh, what should be your backplate, you know, information here. Now it's uh, you, you can adjust this as you want, but this is the information that I was referring to earlier in Synthize, that you should know the the technical aspect of your backplate, you know, uh, which comes in handy when you want to do lens distortion. And I'll Control V the distortion value here, and then hit OK. As soon as I hit OK, look at this door. It's corrected, right? So what this node just did is they took it took uh, synthize distortion value and it converted into this 3D E classic LD model uh, compatible value here, you know that you can see, and corrected the uh, the distortion. Okay, so uh, let's move on. And for no particular reason, I wanted to remove this uh, um, electrical outlet. So what I did is I created a transform node which offset the original file. So if I view this file, it's the same file but it's offset a little down here. What I was going to do is um, take this part of the footage right, and replace that 
with this part here so that you know you would see that the uh, the wall has replaced electrical outlets so let's do that very quickly so what I did first is uh, ran this uh, the, the very first file original file into the met control created a uh, mask here not here uh, and this mask is going to basically just take out uh, this object right and then I apply this into the uh, garbage mat right so you create a hole basically let's fuzz the air, uh, edges a little bit so it's soft so now you have a hole here so you need something behind this and that's this part here that we're going to merge so as soon as you merge you know that part is removed now it's a little brighter here right so you can see that it's a patchwork and brightness and contrast node is the one that you can use to correct that and uh, also animate any of these values to run through the whole shot so that as this wall goes to the uh, towards the edge uh, the brightness and contrast would change to match that there are other ways uh, definitely to do this in uh, uh, in fusion this is just the most uh, you know easy at the time so i just ran with that it just okay so uh the problem though is that as soon as you go to the frames forward right this mask does not stick to the object so we need some sort of a tracking here tracking is really the key in uh, in compositing so let's do a tracker uh, node here and we are going to run this tracker node right so this object here now this object is going to disappear as you go through the shot it disappears from the from the scene right here around here and I want the tracker to continue so how do we do that you know so what we'll do is we'll take first of all let's see when where when does it disappear it disappears here so let's go to 150 right so we'll put this tracker here let's track back and it tracks exactly where you know this particular object goes right now what I'm going to do is come to 150 again and track forward but I don't want to track this object because it's gonna disappear soon so I'll tell fusion to append this tracker to another point and I'll anchor it right here right and then track forward so it will track this point but you'll see that it created the path you know in continuation so when you go back here you look at this tracker right and look at the path and it goes beyond the uh, the edges of the uh, of the shot and you go to 150 here and the tracker continues as if it is still tracking the uh, the electrical outlet so now I have this tracker that I can apply to this particular mask and it's fairly easy you just run a script again go to path 2 I think it was and there you go you have it so now when you merge the node together you know this is the one that offset node which is taking this part of the uh, of the wall and, and applying over here and you see that through this hole what you have is this and when you run the uh, the shot I mean you, you see that the color value is changing which you should animate um, to make it more uh, you know, in line with the uh, with the brightness contrast of the uh, scene here so I'll show you basically what you do is here it looks like that you know we need to uh, bring down the gamma a little bit right down okay so this would basically remove that part and, and you animate that right so you just right click and just set a key and it will just you know animate throughout the shot so uh, that's it for then and uh, in the next video I'll pick up the heavy duty stuff of this composition including the deep compositing you know all the uh, world position pass based compositing and the 3D side of fusion. Okay talk to you then.